Welcome to Arnie's Class Podcast. I'm Arnie Aniel. I'm an HR development consultant, an international public speaker, a workshop facilitator, a coach, and an educator. Life is a great opportunity, and we all learn life lessons every day. This podcast is all about those lessons. Lessons like gratitude, confidence, happiness, mindset, and a lot more. Learning without action is information. Learning with action is transformation. Join me. Learn and transform yourself into a better you. Lightmates, welcome to another episode of Arnie's Class. And this is my first episode for 2022. We are going to talk about happiness with my special guests. What is happiness? As they said, happiness is a state of being happy that is characterized by pleasant emotion. How about you? What what is happiness for you? For me, happiness is accepting who you are, what you are, and appreciating what you have without all those what-ifs, without all those expectations. For me, that is happiness. When I was young, I always believed that successful people are the happy people. But actually, it's the other way around. For me, happy people are the successful people. Because happiness is our ultimate goal in life. It's a global pursuit. Everyone wants to be happy. Some people, of course, especially the young ones, they always think of being successful, not being happy. Because they always like, I think they interchange whether if I'm successful, I'm going to be happy or if I'm happy, I'm going to be successful. For me, clearly, I say that happiness is that ultimate goal that we all, we all target in this life. We all want to be happy. I know it's it's very difficult, especially nowadays with COVID-19, with this pandemic, with what we've experienced and some people unemployed, lost their loved ones. And the question is, can we still be happy amidst this challenging time? For me, my answer is yes. Because for me, happiness is a decision that you make and you make that every day. It's a choice. Some people, they said they will be happy if they have money. But once they have the money, are they happy? Some people I know, they are still not happy. Some, they said, if I have that kind of house, I will be happy. And then they have the house. And then you ask them whether they're happy. Still, they are not happy because happiness comes from within. If it's not, of course, there are external things or there are external experiences that can make us us happy. But happiness that really comes from within is really the true happiness. I'm not going to talk more about this because I believe my guest, my special guest, is going to share a lot of things about being happy. He promised to give and to share what are the steps towards being happy and what are the habits of happy people. So I'm very excited and I hope that you are excited too. You're going to learn more about happiness and being happy. And of course, Happy New Year to all of you life mates. And once again, in this episode, listen and learn. Life mates, Happy New Year and welcome to another episode of Arnie's Class. My special guest is originally from Nigeria and now based in the Philippines. He is a certified life coach with certifications in applied psychology and essential management skills. Aside from that, he is a public speaker, a trainer, and an author of the book, You Too Can Be Happy. Please welcome my special guest. Stephen Wise. Steph, Happy New Year and thank you so much for saying yes to my invitation. How are you, Steph? I'm good. Uh, Happy New Year? I'm I'm good. I'm good. Happy New Year, Steph. The same to you. This uh, remaining few, I think two to two to three days we cross over to the 2022. Yes, that's right. That's right. Happy to. And I'm very glad that we have this topic for my first episode in 2022, which is happiness. Being happy. I think it's, it's very appropriate since we're starting a new year. It's a proper time. Yes, exactly. So, Steph, let's get it started. 
Okay. How do you define happiness? Thank you. Before I, you know, in our days, people clamor happiness, happiness. I want to be happy. I'm sad. I want to achieve happiness in future. Why do I have to live? Is it not better for me to die and join my ancestors? So these are the questions that um, people keep asking and clamoring for on daily basis. So before I try to give you actual definition, or let me use this uh, in these words that happiness is better explained than to be defined because oh. it has to do with um, it's an emotional feelings. Yes. So you cannot feel or you cannot define accurately my feelings. Neither can I define accurately your feelings. So it's better explained than to be defined. So let us, we're going to look into uh, the three traditional theories of happiness. Uh, from there, you can get the real meaning of happiness. We have number one, we have the hedonistic theory of happiness, which states about um, maximizing, maximizing pleasure and minimizing pain, hedonistic, hedonism. Yes. We also have desire's theory of happiness. We talk about fulfillment of one's desire. You have to be happy when you fulfill your desire, regardless um, of the amount of pleasure or displeasure. Again, there is another one that called objective theory of happiness. You know, one said he is happy or she is happy when he achieved a particular objective from you know what wide list of uh, of uh, wants or needs. For example, when you accomplish your career when you get freedom from sickness, freedom from depression, freedom from, from toxic relationship, freedom, oh, wow. <laughs> freedom from uh, financial lack. Yes, when you, when definitely. You, when you have uh, material needs, achieve comfort, you ed education, then you have a good life. You can say, yes, I have... Uh, achieve a particular objective in life okay so these are the three uh, theories of happiness and with these theories of happiness joined together we can now come to what we call the authentic happiness i see step the before you continue step let okay. me just review that so there are three theories that you mentioned yes. the first one you said it's maximizing the pleasure and minimizing the pain that is hedonism hedonistic. Yeah, hedonism and then mm. the second one you said it's fulfillment yes fulfillment yes and desire. then fulfillment of your desires and yes. the last one is you're saying when you achieve something yes and this, when you combine all these theories, then that's the authentic happiness. Yes, we can come to authentic happiness. Thank you. You, you. you can continue, Steph. Okay. So when we talk about the authentic happiness, we talk about the three distinct kinds of happiness. We talk about the pleasant life, which is also the hedonistic theory. I okay. see. We talk about the good life engagement, which is uh, in line with the desire. We talk about the meaningful life, which is the desire uh, in line with the objective theory of happiness. So the authentic happiness synthesizes the three theories of happiness. Do you understand? Yes. Therefore, it allows the uh, it is allowed for the full life balance. Okay. Are you saying, Steph, that if one is missing, like for example, mm. yes, I can maximize pleasure, but and I can minimize the pain, but mm. I don't have the fulfillment of my desire. Mm. And I don't, I, I don't achieve my goals or objectives mm. in life. So it means mm. the happiness is not complete. Yes, it's not complete. The three has to be it there. Is, is, the, is, the three is, of question, them. is questionable. I see. It's questionable. So for you to have authentic, authentic life, authentic happiness, you have to balance uh, the three based on a balance when you satisfy all the three distinctive happiness. So I will now state, state here that happiness 
uh, is the ultimate end and purpose of human existence. It is the perfection of human nature. You know, human happiness depends on the um, on the exercise of our reasoning, since we are rational animals. So, without reasoning, proper reasoning, uh, we cannot actually arrive at happiness. What we call the authentic happiness. So, it has to do with our proper reason our rational abilities will be used and utilized properly in order to come to what we call happiness that so, level of authentic happiness yes let me elaborate further you take for example people um you see a group of uh, uh, ladies in a in a bar in a club they are enjoying themselves rejoicing dancing drinking at that particular moment, they say they are happy. Okay. They are flexing. They are enjoying life. But each and every one of them has a particular thing or few things or bunch of things that are bothering their mental, uh, their brain that give them stress. Uh, so, so many are there to ease out stress, to ease out tension. So, but when you come and meet them at their sober moment, when you meet them at their quiet moment in their comfort zones, you find out that there are a list and heap of things that are bothering them that are unachieved. Okay. There is still the pain and the problem is still there. So, the happiness they achieve at that particular moment of merriment is called hedonistic happiness. Hedonism, you know, maximizing pleasure and minimizing pain. The pain, yes. yes. So, when we use that always, it is not, we are having a what I call momentary happiness. And you know, momentary happiness is always uh, detrimental to our personal growth. Because it's only for a short time. For only, only, only for, for that particular a, moment. A moment. I see. Yes. Okay. And then next is Steph. Okay. After that. So it means yeah. this kind of happiness is only like because you're missing the others. You are missing the others. Then if with you, that, then you don't get that kind of authentic happiness authentic that happiness. you you mentioned earlier with yes. all those three yes. theories yes then you go to the desire theory of happiness when you achieve uh, a particular desire you can say you are happy you know so you you keep on pursuing for example pursuing wealth you keep on pursuing things that you want you keep on pursuing things uh, that gives that could give you uh, a comfort, uh, comfort at a particular moment in time. But you said, the, you, you forget about, yes, there is still a need for me to go out there and catch fun and ease out my pain and tensions. You keep on pushing wealth, pushing worldly, worldly earnings. And material things. Material things. So without enjoyment, without leisure or leisure as the case may be, or without um, recreations. So these things can also add to your mental uh, strength or mental um, torture. Let me use that word because you cannot be too busy. And you just keep about, on pursuing something, yes, right? And forget about your own uh, mental exercise or mental try to ease out some stress. So you have to balance it. Then I uh, come to the knowledge of the one we call about, we talk about um, objective theory. When you select or when you achieve some kind of uh, objective in life, when you, that one is normal. You know, it's normal. When you, when you pass your exams, you get you have to be happy right of course so, yes <laughs> when you when you have a good love in your life a good wife a good uh, family you you are happy so these are dreams that uh when you have a list of dreams or objectives to uh, to be achieved when you achieve them you have to be happy so what next when you achieve that what next so you see then some we people, set new goals. You, so, so yeah, you set new goals. Then you see some people when they achieve a particular thing. For example, I want to buy a car. 
you know, I keep on saving for the car. The day I buy the car, I will have to call for party, you know. I'll have to pop champagne, we drink, <laughs> we enjoy. So all these things done. Then at, at the level, you can see one can also have excess and get drunk. You know, one can also drink SS and get drunk. At that particular point in time, hedonism comes in, you know. So these are the things that, uh, according to Socrates, I think he's the one that said, virtue lies in the middle. We have to balance everything. In our life, that's right. You know, that's right. modesty. So when you have all these things, I think we, we can now talk about, yes, I am a happy man, I'm uh, a happy woman, then I achieve my goal. You live a good life. You have a pleasant life. You have um, what you want. You know, you live most to, to crown it out or to crown it out. It has to do with your mental disposition. See. So, step now that you share that, three theories about authentic happiness. Can you share with us, are there steps in order for people to be happy? Are there actions or things to do in order for them to be happy? Okay. We have steps towards happiness. You know, we have uh, in everything we do in life, there are steps, there are principles. We cannot just, we cannot just say, I'm talking about happiness, I want to be happy, then there are no guides and there are no principles you, you have to follow number one of them you have to prioritize happiness so your priority should be to happiness. be happy yes make happiness a priority whatever you do in life that is good make sure it's it is gerent towards happiness why because it is the ultimate goal you have work uh, you are looking you are studying right so when you study, what is the essence of study? You want to um, have or arrive at a particular uh, stage of your profession so that you can get a good job. Why do you want to get a good job? Because you want to take, uh, be fulfilled financially. Why do you need financial um, or economic stability? Why do you need that? Because you want to take care of yourself, take care of your family, I have a good life, That's right. have a comfort, have a, yes. a shelter, build house, have a car of your test, of your choice, you know. So these things, why do you have want to have all this? Because you want to be happy in life. Yes. So make happiness a priority. Whatever you do, you want to make a relationship. Why? Make it because you want to achieve happiness. You're you, 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 you looking for a job. Look for a job that we not compromise your happiness. So prioritize happiness. So step one, prioritize, prioritize happiness. Okay. happiness. Step two, step. So, so step two, we can now talk about. Um, we cannot talk about knowing yourself. Self knowledge is very very important. Self knowledge, self awareness. Self awareness. Know who you are. Know your background, know where you come from, know your emotional uh, stability and ability, know what you can carry and know what you cannot carry. Okay, know your 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 circle of friends. Have your a lot. Make a keep a lot your 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 spiritual life, you know, your emotional life. So it's very very important. That is step two. So of, know everything about yourself, like your emotional part of your area of your life, yes. your physical, your mental, your spiritual. So it's the holistic. The holistic life. Who are person. you? I see. Who are you? When I ask you, who are you? What do you have to tell me? So know those things that you have to tell me about yourself. Okay. What is your value or what are, what are your values in life? So these are the things that you should know about yourself. Know yourself. Yeah, it's it's so, very important. I totally agree with you, Steph. Mm. Steph, and that people should determine their values because yes. I believe that every everything that you do on a daily basis mm. should be something that will fulfill your values. Yes, because your your value determines your work. Exactly. Your value determines your cost. Correct. Your value yes. determines your 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 bills. That's you know, right. How people price you. How people. Uh, you know, see you. 
That's right. Yes, I, I totally agree, Stephen. So know yourself if you want to be happy. That's if right. you want to achieve the authentic happiness, you know yourself. Okay. Thank you. So, so step if you one. Are, if you are enjoying, uh, for as I said, the, the three theories of happiness, if you want to go to the area of hedonism, you have to know yourself, know your limit, know who you are. If, if you don't recognize who you are, you miss the mark. You have to mess up in that place when you are enjoying yourself. I agree. So I'm sorry, very, Stephen. Very yes. So again, step one is prioritize happiness. Step two, know everything about yourself. Know mm. who you are. So you have to ask yourself and you should be able to answer that. Who are you? Who are you? Yes. Step three. Step three, enhance your self-esteem. Nice. You want to be a happy person? You enhance your self-esteem. You know, so many people are depressed today because of low self-esteem. They reduce themselves. They debase themselves. They don't grade themselves high or at the particular stage. Insecurity. I know a lot of people who are actually insecure about themselves and at the same time, they don't really value themselves. Yes, you don't value yourself. So when you, when you don't enhance your, your self-esteem, it's going to lead you in many crises of life. It's going to lead you into depression. It's going to lead you into trauma. It's going to lead you into uh, being someone who is so scantankerous. It's going to lead you uh, be into envy, being envious and jealous of people. You will not admire good things. It will also lead you to get angry and get... Um, uh, what I got, what I, what, how will I put that? It will make you to be so paranoid. I see. So it deprives you of your happiness. So this is the third step of achieving happiness. No, uh, enhance your, your self-esteem. Self esteem. Because I don't think that people can be happy if they have that low self-esteem. Yes. So it's, it's, not, it's not really... Um, a good thing. Step four. I'm excited to complete these steps. <laughs> <laughs> you know, step four, we can say go within. Can you elaborate more on that, yes, Stephen? Yes, go within. You don't need to have your um, perfect uh, self-esteem before you enter into a certain step of life or a certain stage in life. Go within your ability. Go within your circles. Okay, let me use that. Know your limits. Know your boundaries. Okay, so some of us, we don't know our limit. We don't know our boundaries. So when you know yourself, knowing yourself can lead you to this uh, going within. Okay, when you know yourself, you can know your what. You can know your capacity, you can know your ability, you can know your capability, you can know your, your environment, you can know where you are supposed to be and where you are not supposed to be. You can know when you are welcome and where you are not welcome. So go within. Deep inside you, Deep right? Deep inside you. Don't be too out. Don't be too uh, extrovertic. Get it. So step one, prioritize happiness. Step two, know yourself. You should be able to answer that question, who are you? Yes. And then the third one is to enhance self-esteem. And step four, which you just mentioned, go within. Go within. Go within. Because if you are within, you can be able to solve your problems as they, when they come. You can con be able to control them when they come. You can be able to manage them so that it will not be escalated to the hearing of other people so that it can be you know, used as a thing of mockery. So go within if you want to be. It's another step. Uh, it's one of the steps towards happiness. Yeah, because some people, I think they are strong externally, but actually in the, it's just like they're trying to express that they are strong. Yes. But internally, actually, they are weak. 
And they're just trying to put that facade that, yes, I'm happy, but actually within them, they are not actually happy. So I, I like that step that go within. Yes. Because I think what's inside will be expressed outside. Yes. Step five, step in. Okay, I would say recognize others. Recognize the other. Okay. In this, uh, in this step, I would say uh, it is very, very uh, important not to bring down or talk down on others. When people, uh, or when you, as uh, in particular, achieve a particular greatness, I should recognize you. Okay, I should say yes, well done, kudos, you did well. Then the, where you can perform very well, I should also remember to give you that position or give you that place you are. Encourage, recognize people, see the good in people. Always appreciate always, something about yes, the people. Yes, always appreciate something about people. Okay. The, um, yeah. Recognize others. If you want to, if you want to read further, then I can, you can get my book. So just recognize <laughs> others. So now step. Uh, the next step is learn to forgive. Is that step six? You said there are five steps, Stephen. So this one is step six. Yeah, there learn are many. There are, yeah, learn to forgive. Okay. Wow. An of unforgiving heart or spirit is is doomed to die. Oh. Can you, can you repeat that, Stefan? Can you say an, that again? An unforgiving spirit or an unforgiving life is doomed to die or destruction. Because it's just like drinking poison and thinking you are killing, it will kill me. You are drinking the poison and your intention is that you are killing me while you are the one drinking the poison. Is it possible that I die because of the poison you take? No, it is not. So I have a follow-up question on that, Stefan. Okay. But okay. what do you say to people that yes, I can forgive, mm. but I will never forget? Okay. How okay. will you answer to a, or how will you respond to a person who say, Stefan, you know, forgiving is not that easy to forgive. But yes, I can do that. Maybe mm. it will take time, but I will never forget what happened. You know what? I used to tell people that you can forgive and still you don't forget. Forgiveness and forgetfulness is different. They are two different things. Yes. But we always hear that when you forgive, you forget. Yes. When you forgive, you forget, which is very, very uh, not possible. Exactly. I totally agree on that. Because you cannot forget. Uh, it has to do with memory, right? That's when right. you, there are some kind of events that happen in your life, it's remarkable. You cannot forget. For example, when someone uh, shot you on the leg and you survived it, you cannot forget it. You will keep remembering uh, the event that happened or what transpired before the, the gunshot. Okay, you cannot forget it because it, it, it's, it's, it's left a, a, a mark on your body or your skin. So it is impossible to forget such, but you can forgive it. You know, forgive, forgiveness entails that you, 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 okay, I allow this thing not to bother me anymore. Okay, just forget about it. I don't want to talk about it again. Go, let's move ahead. Let's for let's for that. Let's it is, just move on with our move, lives. Let's move on with our lives. Let by okay? let bygones be bygones. <laughs> Good. It doesn't. Uh, it will not make me to hate you. It not. It will not make me not to associate with you. It will not make me to forget about who you are. It will not make me to understand or recognize who you are. After all, in marriage, people are living, celebrating golden jubilee, silver jubilee. Does not mean that there are no pain since they started that. It's a thing of forgiveness. When it happens, you let it go. Because as long as we too are human beings, there must be uh, offense. We must be offensive okay, to each, and each one and another. So you learn to forgive. That is a very important step towards happiness. Because if you don't forgive people or if you don't let go, you have a very big problem. It you get will, stuck. It will stuck you to understand you instead of you to think 
positive things that can better your life. You'll be, you'll be swimming in the past experiences. And then you drown on your own because you of the past and then you're not happy. And thinking that you are killing me while yes. you are killing yourself. That's right. Actually, I've heard that they said when you forgive, it's actually the the reward is more on yourself than actually the one that you are actually of course. forgiving. Of yes. course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Stefan, you said yeah. there are only five steps, but you gave us a one bonus. Six steps. Yes, I gave you... one bonus. <laughs> but if they want to know bonus. more about those steps, please read his book. You too can be happy by Stephen Wise. Because I want to ask Stephen about the habits of happy people. But before I do that, Stephen, so let's just review because I know people are listening and taking notes. Like for okay. me, every time I listen to something, I'm a very compulsive note taker. Uh, so there are six steps that you already shared on how to be happy. Okay. As we already mentioned, and I think I already said it many times, but I just want to say it one more time. So it's step one is to prioritize happiness. Yes. Whatever you do, make sure that it geared towards being happy. Mm. Number two is know who you are. Mm. Number three, you enhance your self-esteem. Esteem, self-esteem. Yes. Number four is you go within. Yes, of course. My memory really serves me right. Number <laughs> five... <laughs> Because I'm very interested. A lot of people I know, this is a global pursuit. To be happy is a global pursuit. I don't know anyone who actually not really thinking of being happy in life. Mm -hmm. Step five, Stefan, please help me here. Step five is you recognize others, right? Recognize others. And the bonus one is to forgive. Forgive. Forgiveness is very important. But of course, don't forget. <laughs> yes, Learn from course. the experience. You might, you might decide to forgive. You might forgive and you not forget. Yes. But meaning you don't forget, but it doesn't mean you hold grudges. It yes. only means that you learn from the experience. You learn from the experience. Correct. Now, let's talk about what are the habits of happy people. Because sometimes every now and then we, we, we meet people are they are just simply happy. And happiness is contagious. When, when you meet these people... They are happy and then you become happy too. So please share with my life mates, what are the habits of happy people? Okay. You know, there are uh, so many, so many habits of happy people. So many. You know, it has to do with... Uh, depends on the state and the, uh, it depends on the disposition of one when he or she is happy. So number one of them is, you can say, physical activities, or um, activities and physical well-being. Okay. You know, happy people intend to um, involve in things that has to uh, boost their personal well-being. They involve in physical activities. Um, they are happy. They, they do things that will increase their mental uh, uh, state and that we increase their physical state and their health. Um, uh, there are health activities that are involved in. So these are habits of um, happy, people. happy people. So Another thing is uh, spiritual engagement and meaning. Spiritual engagement and yeah. meaning. So a, a happy person uh, is not empty. A happy yes. man is not an empty man. Correct. Yeah. A happy man is not an empty man. For example, uh, uh, if you see a happy person, so let me say it's not an empty. There are things that is in him or her. So a happy person involves himself or herself in spiritual engagement, emotional engagement. He meditates. He contemplates. He learns more on the things that has to do with uh, metaphysicals. See, can I add their reflection? Stephen? Yes, yes. People should also reflect, reflect every now and then. Reflect now and then. So this uh, one of it: power and virtues, powers and virtues. You know, you discover people, um, discover and use your strength when you are happy. 
when you are happy you can know your strength you can use it yes but a, a debased mind don't recognize his virtues and don't recognize his uh, uh his power and his strength okay so something like uh the, here positive psychology has to come in okay so you 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 recognize your weaknesses and your strength as a happy man you, know, you have to focus on the positive positivities of life and not on the but a lot of and, people you know sometimes they focusing more on the negative side on the negative rather, side yeah. yes so happy people are more of positive positivities they focus on the positivities of life so they 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 by that they can know their strengths and powers and their virtues so that is virtues what do i mean by virtues i mean also our values that's happy people so happy person is optimistic optimistic happy person is mindful and appreciation yes okay. of appreciative course. so the happy people you see they they are full of appreciation okay uh, they learn how to say thank you oh the magic words thank you so yes. please either, either from either to the human beings or to the curator okay they appreciate they are grateful great mind grateful heart yes I, i i like to add there because you already mentioned the word grateful is the yeah, attitude of gratitude heart. someone yeah. who is not um who is always happy we always uh more more grumbling you, know, you will not appreciate the ones that have gone good before you only recognize the ones that go wrong So a happy man always appreciate when things go right and when things go wrong also he also appreciate what well, it is the work of God after all I've been enjoying this for a very long time yes, when it and- is now let it be and yeah. it will be also um good so yeah. these are few um attitudes of happy people you have to be mindfulness okay um being appreciative being appreciative you have to yes. be mindful of whatever you do optimistic and just like what you mentioned at the beginning the habits is like i i believe it can be summarized as healthy mind healthy body healthy mind good you're right yes. and then mind. you said grateful mind grateful heart yes. because i believe if you have that kind of gratefulness in everything you do and appreciate i think you are of course you are a happy person yeah a happy person And the more you thank you are thankful for for everything the more you actually find things to be thankful for. Yes of course. You can find reasons to be happy or to be thankful. That's right. Yes. Yeah when you are a thankful person you can also find reason to be happy. Because when you appreciate the ones you have or the ones you 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 will have in future you can be happy. Excuse me and celebrate over it or before it. I see. But what do you say Steph, if for example someone approached to you and then they said I I don't know why but I'm not happy with everything about my life I'm not happy with my relationship I'm not happy with my family how do you talk to these people if they're they're talking about like they're very unhappy about everything about their life okay you know first of all I have uh, I have talked to so many people regarding this You have to first of all check the background. When you check the background or the scenario, you cannot check the consider um the situations and the causes of event. You can also consider uh the 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 family background of such person. Okay, the upbringing. There are people who their child upbringing have put them in a state of sadness, perpetual sadness. You know, they have become so aggressive when things that are things that are not supposed to make them unhappy makes them unhappy. Of course, yes. So when people come to me like that and say, "Look at my situation." 
I will check, I will ask you some questions concerning your background, concerning your family upbringing, then concerning your past experience. Then I can arrive on a conclusion. And then I know how to say, okay, let us do it this way. Look at what to do, look at what to do. Then when you come to me that I'm not happy with my marriage or with my relationship, I will also ask you some questions regarding you as a person. It has to come from you. Okay. Um, you have, when a relationship is having crisis, okay, um, you, you that is claiming the victim or playing the role of the victim, uh, check it very, very well. 50% or 60% of the faults could be contributed by you. So it know yourself It's to the tango, first. right? Mm -hmm. So know yourself also. So then you, if you recognize your own fault, then know uh, where you having limitations and fix them. Then you can solve the problem. So the problems in relationship always come within. It's not from outside. And mostly it has to do with understanding. What is the purpose of that relationship? What do you want to achieve in that relationship? Because you cannot be in every any relationship with that goal or without um, objective is bound to die. It's not going to lead you in happy life. So there should be a go clear goal for the relationship. There should be a clear goal. You have to set a clear goal. Why should be together? Why should we Why stay should be together? together? Yeah. Or... Why are we this? Why are we having all these connections of the time. It is for uh, 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 physical gra or, or uh, gratification of the flesh, or is it for hedonistic uh, theory? Uh, you want to... Uh, just to enjoy the pleasure. To, just to enjoy the pleasure, like that. So if you... It depends. So if you are of the area of maximizing the pleasure, so forget about... Um, arriving at authentic happiness in that relationship. Okay, so you just enjoy it and go your way. How about you yourself, Stephen? Of course, we are all human beings. We have our, our weaknesses and strength. How about you? What if you? I, I'm sure you also experience sadness once in a while, and you also you, you cannot be like 100 percent happy, or else there mm -hmm. is there's no balance. Yeah. How about you? What what's what's your strategy? If you are in that kind of situation, that you don't feel you're 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 not really feeling that that mood of happiness, how, how do you handle that? Okay, I want to tell you about me. You know, my childhood. When I was growing up, I was very aggressive, hot tempered, so much hot tempered. During my primary school days, I used to go with knife, you know. That. Wow. Yeah. So, and it will also please you to know that today I'm most kind and calm. Person. So you're the total opposite of your childhood. Yes, total opposite <laughs> your of childhood my childhood. image and now yes. totally different. Why? Because I found value in my life. I don't sleep over anger. I learned to do that. And it is it was as a result of my mother's prayer. My mother's prayer transformed me totally. Wow. Okay. So those days you will not hear an upheaval or a noise fight outside. When you look outside, I'm involved. I'm You're always the one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so the mother's prayer is always um, at the great side of me. And today, I can say categorically that I'm not pet up by so many things. Okay? Mm -hmm. Even if you take my picture, I, 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 you know, it, it goes, why I'm not pet up is because of my conscience. I let I trained my conscience to the estate or to the level that when the conscience is clear, I have nothing to fear. Of course. So I trained myself to the extent that yes, 
and you know, my wife here always say, I always talk. You know, when when I see things go wrong, I don't keep quiet. Okay. When 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 she does something wrong, I must talk and say, point it out. Look at here, look at here, look at here. It's wrong. When I say it, I forget it. But I have passed the message. So at I least learned. you already expressed that. Good, good. So I tell people, always learn to pass the message across. Voice it out. And then leave the grudge. Leave because the I, pen. But I think some people, what happened is because they, they, they hold the grudges, they don't mm-hmm. express you that. Hold, you don't express that. You exactly. hold it. You become so um, reserved. Being so reserved also is detrimental to your happy life. And then you become resentful. You become resentful. I learned how to let go. It's my virtue. It's my value. I let, let go, go and let things. God. Let God. Because I have experienced so many bad things. I have, you know, the things that a, a man could experience, betrayal, hurts, lied against, backbited, karate assassinated, all I have experienced. But those that did that to me are still my friends today. Well, I'm interested too, because you mentioned, I'm interested that, because the transformation, when did it happen? Okay. Because you said you used to be like the aggressive person and then mm. because of your mother's prayer, you were yeah. transformed. But yeah. when did the transformation happen from this being aggressive person to become like this, a happy person, very calm? When, when did it happen? Okay. Actually, the, 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 the aggressiveness life or the, the life of aggression uh, stops um, when I joined the seminary. The formation I got, the training, the spiritualities, everything changed and transformed me. I became a professed religious. If you know what the professed religious yes. mean, I yes. So everything. So everything changed. Changed after that. After that. Nice. But not that now I cannot. Uh, not that I am weak now. I'm such a strong person. No, when I'm annoyed, I take it in a positive way. I don't take. I don't accept. I don't tolerate. There's communication. Communication. Yeah. Because some people, when they have that kind of feeling, just like what we were talking about earlier, like you said, when, when your wife, there is something wrong about it, you express that and then you tell her. I think communication is, is important there. Mm. And some people, they don't communicate. They don't express that. Yes, you don't express your feelings. You, you take it to heart. You keep it. It will be killing you. What happened? What happened? No, no, no. It's okay. But inside you, you are dying in pain. Yes, you are already full. And then one day, you will just one explode. One day, you will just <laughs> explode. And if I said, if I ask you, did I offend you? Why, why is your face like this? You say, no, no, no. All is well. Then next week, after one month, one year, you remember such again. Why? Because it's there. You didn't let it out. That's so right. I will not ask you, why didn't you tell me those days or that period when it happened? You said, you know, I feel like not saying, are you crazy? <laughs> so you are killing yourself. Why do you feel like not saying that? So I used to tell people, be open, you know, say some things out. When you say out, it will leave you. But, but in when, an appropriate way. In right? a proper Stephen. way. Yeah. Not with anger, not with all those yeah. rage and, and sh- you know, sometimes some people, they, they do it in a negative Of course, behavior. we have to be disciplined. We are human beings. We have to be rational in the things in, 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 in life. Whatever we do, we'll do it with discipline. You know, they, there is a different the way animals, we, we, we react when they are anger uh, than from the way we hire animals that are rational, we react. Okay, you don't start fighting on the street because you are you, you get annoyed by your friend. You start fighting, exchanging blow like goats. So these are the things that that is why we are 
higher animals, human beings, we are more rational. We use our ability, uh, reasoning ability to solve our problems amicably when it comes. Yes. You mentioned that your friends, the friends that you had before are still friends now. Yes, of course. And when they meet you now, what did they say? I mean, after you, you change. After hearts, oh, after yes. offense. Exactly. Then, All those experiences. What did they say? You know, what happened? Miracle. <laughs> <laughs> you know that they, 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 the question there is how do you handle them? How do you handle people? Do you make people feel that, yes, they are condemned because of what they did to you? You don't condemn them. They are human beings. The tendency to, 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 to disobey, the tendency to hurt people are there. Even me, I have the tendency to hurt someone. Okay, so when, you, when someone hurts you, do you condemn the person totally? Of course not. You don't, you don't condemn the person totally. That is, you know, that is, uh, it's, it's a mistake. Someone's mistake is the one that hurts us, not that person in particular. So the only thing you have to do, you make the people understand that, yes, I am hurt from your action, from your mistake, from your misbehavior, I am hurt. Don't do it again. So you don't condemn them. So you also, those people that hurt me before or that made me uh, feel um, uh, betrayed, today they are still my friend. We eat also. We, we, you know, sometimes I invite them to my home. Sometimes I invite them out. Sometimes when I have um, something to do, I invite them. They are still there nice. because they are also beneficial to me. Of course. I, I can imagine that because pe if you find sincere, faithful friends, mm. you are very lucky and you have to keep them. Yeah, you have to keep them. Stefan, we're almost moving towards the end of this podcast, but I want to ask you questions that I normally ask my guests. And one of them is, what's the greatest lesson? After like you, you even wrote a book about happiness, you've experienced all those things about being happy. What is the greatest lesson you've learned in your life? Wow. This is a very deep one. <laughs> yeah. I always get that kind of comment every time I ask people. I know it's, it, it takes time to really answer that question. But if there's something that you, you want to share, a lesson, especially to the young generation, okay. what will it be? There are many things that give someone lesson or that teaches us lesson in life but i want to categorically point out this one always always okay let me say two okay can i say okay. two yeah sure okay <laughs> okay maybe i'll change my question to what are the two greatest lessons very good you've now, learned in your life number one i learned to keep my conscience alive What is conscience? I define conscience as the tiny voice of God in you, in us. It's a tiny voice that speaks to us. This is good. This is not good. This is bad. Don't do this. It's not good. Even if you are doing things that is bad, and you know that these things are benefiting from it, keep your conscience alive. alive that one day you have to quit from that. Okay, but when you are in a particular things that are not good, then you let your conscience die. It makes you to become a beast. You don't have nothing concern human being that will troubles that will trouble you again. You don't have to feel pain when things go wrong to people. So keep your conscience alive. That is my word. Then second, another thing is that. Do not let the voice of people weigh you down. In other words, don't be afraid of what people will say. What you say or what you tell to yourself, I think is more important. It's more important. When I want to, you know, let me tell you this, that some of my friends are still in the seminary today. Oh. Why? Because there was a time... They were into crisis, you know. 
even until now, so many are into crisis, what I call vocation crisis. Okay. But they want to quit, but they cannot quit because they are afraid of what people will say. You know, in African mentality, in if you quit from religious life or seminary, they will say, yeah, maybe you sleep with a woman or, yes, most, mostly you are caught with a woman. So they will term it scandalous. They will bring scandalous things to tag you, you know, in order to kill your image or kill your morale. But you, you know that this is not the reason why I left the seminary. So, so many are there today because they are afraid of what we people say. Oh, people saw me. I am participating. I wear sultan. I am popular and the author. I do this and this. Why now if I quit? What would they say? Oh, they will say I pregnant woman or I steal or I, I involve in gross misconduct, right? So, when I left and I'm happy that so many people, so many of them are calling me today. How do you do that? How did you do that? How did you summon the courage? I always tell them, don't mind what people say. What will people say? If you are afraid of that, you cannot take a step to achieve your goal or to achieve happiness, which is the ultimate goal in life. Yeah. Wow. Two, indeed, two greatest lessons. Yeah. that you share thank you so much for sharing that keep your conscience alive alive yeah and don't let what other people say about you weigh you down weigh you down yes nice next Stefan what decision which more or less I think I have an assumption but I don't want to say it yes <laughs> what decision you've made in the past yes and it has an impact of who you are at the moment yeah, the, the decision I make in the past is leaving the seminary. To make the decision that to quit the seminary. It got to a stage where I am mentally depressed and mentally tortured. It got to a stage where I see that my, my personal well-being has been tampered. I got to a stage where I feel disrespected. I got to a stage where I felt de devalued as a human being. I got to a stage where I saw people, um, people who are supposed to be looking onto messed me up. I got to a stage where I felt racism where I felt discriminated. This one was the last stages of my feelings in the Philippines. I felt that then on a very good day, I hung my bag, I'm going, I left. So making such decision changed my life automatically that I said, I challenged myself, no. Yes, my vision is life is to preach the good news. How can I preach the good news? And look at it, I have a published book today. I move on. I have so many articles written there online. People call me to write articles and publish in newspapers. I have a published book and second one will soon be out. So ah, second with book. this, yeah, second book is on the process. So with this, you can see that leaving the seminary did not deter me from achieving my goal. The good news is also being preached. I help people to achieve their ultimate goal, which is happiness. I propagate how to live a good life. I, I, I teach people on personal leadership, how to un understand their personal leadership. Today, I have, I am the founder of, um, I'm the founder of uh, an NGO which teaches people how to be happy and achieve their goal. Nice. Nice. 
So I'm in touch, I'm imparting in life, I'm touching lives. So which, if I'm also, if I were to be a priest today, it is the same goal to impart life, to change That's life, right. to preach the gospel. Yes. So I'm do, still doing it. But Stephen, what if, if I may ask, what is it that made you decide that I'm quitting the seminary? Okay. You no, know, I think uh, I think for uh, let me leave that that questions. I think I will not answer it categorically because it may it may it may infringe on people's uh, uh, right of privacy. Okay. Okay. But the issue is that today I experienced things that made me to quit. Then today, and again, why another reason that made me to quit is that I found no meaning in living the life of pretense. For me, if you uh, are near, you prefer to live a life of pretense. No, Stephen. I prefer not to live a life of pretense. I prefer if I do it, yes, if you ask me, I take responsibility of my action. I, do, I did it. Be authentic. Be authentic. I cannot be dying in feelings and in pains. Then I am, you know. Don't pretend. I pretend over it. Today I have a baby boy and a wife. So it's good. Happy life. Happy you have life. a book, published book. You have a wife. You have a family. You have a yes, son. Yes, of course. So happiness is the ultimate. Stephen, I know you published a book, which is called You Too Can Be Happy. And at the same time, you're working on the second book, which is, what's the title of your second book, Stephen? It's my personal experience in abroad. I tell to it, How to Survive in a Foreign Land. Wow, good luck on that. And my question is, if you or maybe someone else will write your life as a book, okay. what will be the title and what kind of book will it be? Fiction or non-fiction? <laughs> <laughs> you decide. Will it be a non-fiction or is it a fiction? Or you, you decide. Will it be a self-help book? Okay. I will type, I will title it B, be a reflection of yourself. Be a reflection of, of the, yourself. Be a reflection of yourself. What's going to be the content of the book, Stephen? Okay, being a reflection of yourself is you as a human being, I want to live a life that it's just that when you see me, you only see me as Stephen Wise, you will say, yes, I have seen Stephen. It also just towards what I said, being, living a life of pretense, living a life of deceptive. Okay. You don't, I don't see myself being a mirage of people's view. You know, Mirage, when you are driving on the yes. road, on the third road, you will, right. at a distance, you will see that doing like this, there is a water in the front. But when you come there, there is not. No, yes. Okay. Don't be chameleon, you know, being a chameleon. Uh, what do I call that? Yeah, the, the animal. Mm, the chameleon. changes. Yeah, so, chameleon. The reflect changes. who you are. Reflect who you are. Be who you are. Be what you are. When people authenticity be authentic when people call you or people say yes this is who this is yes i am this i did that so be a reflection of yourself be a reflection of yourself watch out maybe it's going to be a published book in yes. the next five or ten years uh, you never ten know. Years, <laughs> yes be a reflection of yourself so it calls for authenticity of life. And if you're authentic, you are happy. You are happy. Because you don't pretend. Stefan, it's been an hour and I'm sure I myself learned a lot from this conversation. And the listeners, my life mates, I'm sure they took notes of those steps on how to become a happy person. 
and the habits. If there is something that really for me is very important is to prioritize happiness. Yes. If, if there's something that I, I would like to remember from this episode is you prioritize happiness and at the same time the habits of I believe happy people. Of happy people. Everything can be learned and you can just start the habit little by little. Because I believe that each one of us, we are capable of being happy. Yes. Happiness is part and parcel of our human existence. That's right. I like that. It is, Parts it is, and parcels of our of human, human existence. existence. It is in you. It is within you. It is, and you know, I tell people, happiness is an intrinsic value of you as a human being. It's not an extrinsic value. It is intrinsic because it is within you. It is you are the de determinant factor of your happiness. But the problem, you know, sometimes Stephen, they don't even know. Some people they don't even know what makes them happy. Yes, because it cannot be traveled to happiness. You cannot travel to get happiness. It yeah. is within you. That's right. Cre you, you, we create our happiness. We generate our happiness. We make it happen. I like we, that. Make we, it happen. If you want to be happy, make it make happen. Make it happen. We decide it. We consider it. Yeah, happiness is a decision that you make each very, day every time you wake good. up in the morning. Very good. Yeah. But because some people, I think they depend on others to be to happy. Be happy. Mm. It, it becomes the responsibility of other people, of the people around them. How can you give me the responsibility for you to be happy? It is your responsibility, so you carry your responsibility. Yes. Very well said, and thank you so much for everything that you shared. Stephen, if the people want to reach, reach you, how can they reach you? What's your okay. Facebook? And the book, of course, I'm sure you have a website, the NGO that you mentioned, that you're the founder. Yes. Okay. Uh, you can reach me through my, let me say, through my social media handles. My Facebook is Stephen Weiss. You can see in my cover page in Facebook, you can see a uh, double Catholic mass celebration is there. Then you can also reach me at my, follow me on Instagram, Coach Steph Wise, you know, at Coach Steph Wise. You know, that is my Instagram handle. You can also check me on LinkedIn. It's Stephen Wise, my LinkedIn. You can check me out on my website. I have two websites. My authorship website is www talk to two as a number talk to stephenwise.com another website dot talk to stephenwise.com then my foundation website is www.stephwisehappinessfoundation.org stephwise s t e p h then wise then happinessfoundation.org. So with this, you can uh, make further communications with these uh, links. Can I say so, that if you want to be happy, contact Stephen Weiss? <laughs> yes, of course. You can also get a copy of my book through this uh, medium. It's available on Amazon. It's available on Amazon, but the Amazon account is giving me problem. It has been published there since 2018. Um, um is is unaccessible by me, but my account is opening. But how to monitor my sales in Amazon? I'm finding it very difficult. I have a link that I share my book, which is through Payhip. You know, you know, Payhip is a selling platform. Also, I share my book through there. If you want to get the book, you can also get the book through my website. Uh, talk to Steve Wise. Uh, stephenwise.com you can go to shopping or to shop you can click shop then you make a purchase you pay through paypal or other means there thank you so much i'm sure people will contact you because they want to be happy thank you. <laughs> and with that thank you so much again for saying yes to this invitation life mates you too can be happy it's a decision that you make each day of your life and it's your responsibility. And once again, from Step and Wise, make happiness your priority. And if you like this particular episode, please download, share, 
like to your family and friends so everyone can be happy too, just like Stephen Wise. Thank you so much. Happy New Year to everyone. I wish you all a fantastic, marvelous, and magnanimous 2022. God bless you all. Happy New Year. <music>